was born in Waterbury, Connecticut and grew up here. The family is really a tribe. Their ties to one another preempt almost any other impulse. Their loyalties to one another are best described by the word fierce. There is no more important idea than the family as the center and the middle of it all. Grandma's great heartbreak of all time was that she had to leave her family in Italy, that it was the most painful thing other than the death of her son in her life. And she talks about her mother and father and sisters, how they wept and wept and wept as if she were dead. The factor that brought her away from them was her new family, her husband. And within the Italian family, the wife's devotion and loyalty to the husband is beyond question. grandmother says to me, Ma, you don't want to come home to us? I feel very bad. She's 89 years old, and she's going to die one of these days. I love her very much. I know that the world that's alive in her spirit is one that's going to be lost when she's gone, and that I'm not going to have access to. All kinds of folklore. Grandma has her own dream system. It's not Freud's dream system. It's based on centuries of thought that go back to Greek and Roman thinking. In my grandmother, I really see the direct link to the Greco-Hellenic traditions. And when did you wear this, Grandma? When I give them my ring. Oh. Oh, okay. Nobody wear it no more. <laughs> oh, fashion so good. My name was Lucia Santos. I was born in Italy, in the villaggio of Tolle. My father kept cows, and he made cheese. My father wanted to send me to school, but my mother wanted me to stay home to help her. I never learned to read or write. Next door to us lived a boy called Vito. He was a very good looking fellow and we loved each other. Vito wanted to marry me, but he had to go to America. A lot of young men want to marry me, but when they asked me, I would always find fault with them. Vito came back from America. We were married. I had my first daughter. My husband returned to America. 
After two years, I followed him. So I had to come alone. On the boat to America, I had Angela. She was small, and she used to run away from me. I was so frightened. The sea was very rough. I got very sick. For three or four days, I couldn't move from the cabin. It was really bad, especially for me, because I had never traveled before. You arrive here, and you don't know anyone, and you feel so bad. I felt like it was the end of the world for me. I felt so alone. We bought the farm in Waterbury and some land around it. And that's where we spend our lives. I had three more daughters. Then I had two boys. One was called Pasquale and one Rocco. I lost Patsy. On the farm we had cows and I milked them and made cheese. I did everything for the house. I washed the bottles for the milk and my husband delivered at four o'clock in the morning. The kids were small. It was too much. I didn't want my daughters to leave home. I wouldn't let Rose go to school in Hartford because I want them close to us always. This is the way I was raised, and that's how my children were raised. When I have a dream, it always happens. When I lost my baby, I had a dream. I lost a child. I said to myself, no, I'm not going to lose a child. I have all my children. It's never a clear dream. But there's always something that tells me what's going to happen. After my dream, the accident happened, and I lost my child and also my brother-in-law. When I lost my husband, I dreamt he was on the edge of the water. His clothes were on the bank, and then he wasn't there. I was crying in my sleep, Vito, Vito. My husband woke me up. He said, what's wrong with you? I wouldn't tell him the dream. <laughs>